So Chuck, we, we a new tradition we have uh, in the final segment is the lightning round. That's what it is. And we have a bell for it. You Ta have the bell. There it goes. And, okay. And uh, I will answer every question as a sound bite. Correct. Just so we can cram because I take so long on all the other segments. Try to pack in as many questions as we have. All okay. right. Are you You're ready? ready? I am ready, sir. Go for it. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> this is from Lewis Moses on Facebook. Do dust clouds around stars cause electrical storms? Uh, electrical storms in the, around the star, it's, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here's what happens. The sun, stars, the sun in particular in this case, uh, gives off what we call a solar wind, which are charged particles. And those particles can enter a dust cloud and ionize the dust cloud or excite it and possibly have it um, uh, trigger a phenomenon similar to what we have on Earth, like our aurora. Right. So maybe it, maybe there's aurora in nearby dust clouds to stars. I haven't thought it through, but it's certainly possible. There you go. You got it. Next. All right. This is from Marta Secreca. Marta. Marta. Mm -hmm. What do we know of the star that exploded to give material to form our solar system? Mm, nice. I would love to name it. No. Oh, do you name something that's dead? Yes. Long gone and dead that we can't find anywhere. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's dead and gone. Right. Actually, so, my great grandmother had a name. Oh no, I have to go great great because I actually knew my great grandmother. So. Well, it's not. So five billion years ago, there was a star that exploded, created enrichment, iron, nickel. You know, um, nitrogen, oxygen, a lot of the things we find on Earth and in our bodies were forged in a star that came right before us. Uh, yes, it gave its life for for us, and that's a good thing. Um, and uh, no, sure, go ahead and name it, but yeah. we have no idea where, what where the remains are. Most of it is just completely gone. Well, it some died. Of it, some of it is in, in us ourselves. Okay. Well, it died for us. Let's call it Jesus Star. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> The Jesus star. The Jesus star. All right. Here we go. All right, let's move on. This is from Sarah Ashley Colding. Will the sun burn out before or after we collide with Andromeda? Ooh, this is a cool one. So that the sun cool will burn one. out in like five billion years. And we'll, now the collision with Andromeda is not an overnight thing. We are two huge systems and we'll start falling towards one another, distort. That'll happen between five and seven billion years from now. So, the death of the sun should be our highest priority, not the collision not with Andromeda. Not the collision with Andromeda. Bang! <laughs> Nicely done. All right. Okay. Um, this is from Dennis B. via email. Oh, by the way, people might not have known that we're on a collision course with another yeah, galaxy. Yeah, I was going to say that's... That, that's, that's... Sorry, I forgot to, yeah, like, that's some to say... That... Holy... <laughs> yeah, and, it, and you're saying that it's going to happen. Oh, yeah, but we have other issues before then. All right, go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been a player, pleasure playing with you. It's like the Titanic. <laughs> All right, here we go from Dennis B. via email. If the sun were to disappear in an instant, how quickly will we on Earth know about its gravity-wise? Eight minutes and 20 seconds. Next. <laughs> <laughs> if the sun disappeared... We would not know about it at all. We would still orbit. We would still feel its gravity. We would still feel its heat and warmth and light for 8 minutes, eight minutes and 20, 20 seconds. seconds. Then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> we, what a great movie! We fly off, and, and there's no way you could have known about it. Because that information is moving at the speed of light. And, oh my from God. the absence of a sun to the radius of our orbit. Oh, that is fantastic. You got it. Okay, next. This is from Kelly Smith. By the way, if you can do the math, the speed of light... Divided into the distance from the sun to the earth, you get eight minutes and 20 seconds. And the answer no. is, I can't do the math. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes. Go. Here we go. Kelly Smith uh, from Facebook wants to know, wow, okay, I don't know if we could do this in a sound bite, but I'm going to give it to you. How are neutron stars formed? What is their life cycle? Ooh. So, a white dwarf star, which is the sort of the first stage of the death of a star, our sun will become a white dwarf, is held up by what's called electron pressure. Okay. Electrons can't get it too close to one another, they'll separate. Right. All right? It's called electron pressure, electron degeneracy pressure. But you, you can over, overcome that, but you can't be an electron if you overcome it. So you can overcome the electron pressure by cramming the electrons into the protons that are in the nucleus. Gotcha. You cram a negative charge and a positive charge, what do you get? Ah, uh, beautiful fireworks. <laughs> you get a neutron. The, the charges cancel, and that's how you make a neutron star, cramming electrons up the butt of a proton. And so then you get a neutron star far more dense than, than, a, than 
than a white dwarf ever was. In fact, one cubic centimeter would weigh, weigh as much as 30, a herd of 30 billion elephants. You had me at cramming up the butt. <laughs> we gotta run! This has been Cosmic Queries edition of Star Talk Radio. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your host. Thanks, Chuck. Nice Thank for you. being here.